uh, earlier this week, I put this video up on Twitter. It did really, really well. I was kind of shocked how well it did. Um, but I wanted to talk through how I made the data set for this. So obviously it's, you know, it's a bunch of patterns, um, maybe wall pa paper or rugs or something. So um, I thought I'd just walk through how I built this inside of the data set tools library. Um, before we do that, I want to give a thank you through Davey and Anna for recently becoming members. Um, not even recently, I'm like, I need to catch up a lot on new memberships. So uh, thanks for supporting the channel, really appreciate it. Uh, the new class that Lee and I teach uh, is officially sold out. Um, so unfortunately, you won't, no one will be able to use a discount to sign up for that class. But uh, if you are a member on either Patreon or YouTube, you will get those videos uh, as they happen. So you'll basically be able to like, sort of play along with class without being a part of the class. Um, that's just a benefit of being a member. So I uh, hope other folks can maybe sign up. It really helps me uh, make these videos and do more stuff like this for y'all. Um, okay, cool. So this video is just about finished looping. Um, so you can see here, like, uh, it's pretty like similar patterns and they're all looping. And I just want to quickly show how I built this inside the dataset tools library because this is actually only using 100 images. Um, but I'm using a cool little like cropping technique to actually make more than 100 images. And I want to talk about sort of what I've learned that works and what doesn't, that sort of thing. Um, okay, so we'll get out of this video here. All right, so um, the way we're going to work is we're just going to work with uh, a tool in Dataset Tools called Multicrop. Um, so if you've never, uh, if you've not yet installed Dataset Tools, go ahead and just uh, install it. Uh, there's another video that I'll link to that uh, shows you how to install that. Um, if you have previously installed it, you'll need to do a git pull um, just to get the latest uh, updates because this is a new tool that I've added uh, in the past month or two. Um, okay, so it's called uh, multi-crop. Um, and the best way to work with any of these tools, I'm really bad at documenting them text-wise, so um, I just recommend doing dash dash help. This will always pull up like sort of what the inputs and outputs are for this. So in this case, um, there's a bunch of options here. You've got uh, the file extension, which we'll just output them as PNGs. How many? We'll talk about what that is in a minute. Um, input folder. So basically, this is the no the images you're putting in. Um, output folder is the uh, images you're putting out. Um, and then we're going to walk through a couple of these as we uh, look at each uh, example. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to clear the screen again, and I'm going to grab one image. Um, I've been grabbing images from uh, the site called Raw Pixels. I'm, I'll add a link to a referral code if you want to sign up through, through that. Um, I found it to be really cool. There's some cool images in there. Um, and this is like exactly sort of of the vibe that I'm going with with that video that I was showing. So let's find one here that's good. These are all Walt well, William Morris patterns, I think. So um, if I just open this um, in Photoshop, we can see how big it is. All right, so. This is uh, 4,000 pixels by 42,000 pixels, so almost square. Um, now, you know, previously I would just like resize this and just be like, this is one image. But what we want to do is actually turn this into sort of a pattern. We want to pick up different textures. Actually, maybe this isn't the best image. I want something that repeats a little bit more. Let's uh, close this out. Yeah, that's a good image, or this is good. Let's let's use this. Because um, we want to sort of pick up that the flowers can happen in different places and the other parts can happen in different places as well. So uh, we're going to work with this image. So I'm just going to copy the path for this image. Um, and I'm going to start building my, uh, my argument uh, command here. So Python, multi-crop. And then we're going to do dash i. So uh, you can also do dash dash input folder. Dash i is just a shorthand. It's something I added recently to make it a little bit easier on myself. We're going to paste in that path. Um, I've also, this used to only accept folders. Now it can accept single images. Um, so you can go ahead and do that as well. Um, so dash dash i, uh, or sorry, dash i, uh, and then the path to the image. And then we're going to do dash o. And let's just do dot slash outputs. Try and type with this microphone in my way. Um, and then we'll do, uh, let's just do test one. Okay. So uh, the next thing we need to add here is we need to add a min size. So we're going to do dash dash min size. And what this does is this sets uh, what's the smallest window square that we want. So all this works with square right now. I may eventually add this to work for non square, but for the moment, it just works with square. So min size. So the realistic min size you want to do is this, you know, the, the minimum size you want for your uh, data set. So like in this case, we can just do 1024. 
Um, so let's say we upload this to style again, and we want to use 1024 by 1024. Um, so what this will do is it will look at this image, which is not loaded here. Um, let's load this up in Photoshop. So this image is uh, 3500 by 2300. So what it's going to do is it's going to take um, a bunch of patches randomly that are 1024 by 1024. So if I just like quickly draw this out kind of in uh, in Photoshop, it'll go here, it'll go here, it'll go here, it'll go here. Um, now, one thing that some people have done in the past, they've done sort of a sliding window, which is basically you take a, a screen here, you take a screen here, it's like sort of slides across the entire image. Um, for whatever reason, I didn't do that for this. Uh, I think that would work as well, but what I'm gonna show you is the next step is to actually add a scale factor in. So what we use actually use some multi-scaling. Um, and in my experience, that's led to much better results. Um, I tend to find if you use the exact same scale, it tends to not work as well. I'm not sure why that is. I have some theories about you know just how style again trains and that sort of thing. So what we're gonna do is we're also gonna set a max size. Um, so let's set a max size. And let's set it to be whatever the, the maximum of this thing is. So the max height uh, is 2361. So basically what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna change the scale of our of our crop. So sometimes it'll be 1024, and then sometimes it'll be 20, you know, 58 or whatever, or, or any size between there. And it's going to generate a bunch of different crops. Um, and in my experience, that works a little bit better. It just sort of like the, the model trains a little bit better in those cases. So let's set the max size to be uh, let's just say 2500, so it's never the full size. Um, and then the last thing we need to pass in is just how many we're going to use. So um, what I've done in the past is I try to get to about a thousand. So if I have 100 images, I might do a patch of 10. Um, so I get like 1,000, uh, 10 times 100. Um, in this case, let's just do 10 to sort of see what happens. Now, one thing to note is uh, all of these will automatically scale down. So every time we make a patch, it's going to make a patch at a certain size, and it's going to scale it down to the minimum size. So uh, this is a good technique. I'll show you one more technique on, on how to sort of change that if you're interested. Um, and then, so let's just run this, and let's see, and then I'll do another test. Hmm. OK, maybe I do have to just do this with one image. Um, let me just quick, maybe this doesn't work yet with uh, single images. I'll fix that in a minute, but um, we can sort of start here with, let's do, okay, let me just do this. So let's just add in folder and we'll call this test. And we will move in that image, which was this one. And let's copy the path of that folder. I will fix that in a minute. Whoops. Okay, come on. Um, let's just slide back here. Okay, so we will just switch this to slash test. That way it's running on just that single image. And we're on this. And what's the error, error here? Maybe I set the max size too high. Yep, okay, so for whatever reason, maybe I set the max size too high. Um, what was the height on this? Oh yeah, it was too, it was too large. So basically I set the, I set the max height uh, too large. That was just me not remembering numbers, like I usually do. Um, so if you set that to a smaller value, it's fine. So if you set it to too large, it's gonna, ma it's gonna throw an error. Um, so now if we go to my folder here, just go here, outputs, test one, um, you'll see it has generated a uh, 10 random crops. And you'll see there's a little bit of scaling difference, right? Like that flower is bigger than this flower. Um, so this is then what I trained it on. So in the case of the video I just showed, it was 100 images of uh, similar patterns, just all cropped differently using this multi-crop tool. Um, okay, so one thing to note is uh, sometimes I've found that I, if I uh, zoom in too close for a reason, maybe the image has been resized or it's pixelated a little bit, um, you can end up in a place where it's sort of, uh, you get at the, at the smallest size, it's like blurry or there's JPEG artifacts or other things. So there's another way in here to set a larger size and then resize them all. So I'm going to keep most of this. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to change the min size to something like 1500. And let's rename our folder here just so I can show what this is. And then at the end, let's add uh, dash dash resize. And then let's do 1024 by 1024. 
So by default, it looks at the min size and resizes to that. This what I'm saying is take this different scaling effect, but then at the end, resize them all down. And so if I go in here and I look at test two, um, this now they're all 1024 by 1024, but the crops never were. And one last test to just show you is if you don't want anything um, resized, you can do no underscore resize. And let's just change the name of our folder here. That's three. And now you'll see the sizes here, uh, it has not been resized. So seven, this is 1920 by 1920, 21 by 46. Um, so again, there's a couple different ways to do with this. I don't know necessarily why you would want to do this. Um, maybe you're going to resize them all at the end or do something else. Um, but that's an option, uh, if you want it. So those are just three options on how to sort of do multi-cropping. Again, this works really well for patterns. Uh, maybe if you want to generate maps or other things, um, this is sort of a nice way to do it. I find again, the multi-scaling adds a nice little detail that, um, for, for my experience tends to train things better. So you can maybe play with that. Uh, maybe don't just set them in max to be the same and just sort of see what happens. Um, maybe you'll get better results with your test. Um, so that's it for this video. Uh, again, I'll have a bunch more videos coming up because I've made a lot of updates to the dataset tools library um, in the past month or two. So look out for some of those. Um, always, as always, you're welcome to drop a note in Slack channel if you have questions about anything. Um, and with that, uh, thanks so much and I'll see you next time.